Hello, what's up? Ali here, and uh, today we are going to transfer and play our PS1 games uh, on our PS2 internal hard drive. The benefits of uh, this procedure is that it is so much faster and uh, smoother playing on our internal hard drive uh, compared on using just the external hard drive. But the downside here, it, it takes a lot of work for it to work. So uh, we are going to go through some... Uh, uh, process here and hopefully you do bear with me but we'll try to make this tutorial as uh, easy as possible by breaking down the process into simpler parts and uh, having said that uh, let me go ahead and introduce uh, the files that we are going to need we need the pop started that elf for our ps2 to recognize our ps1 games and we need the updated opl loader in case your opl version does not support ps1 games yet we need the updated u launcher in case uh, your U launcher does not support creating a directory on your PS2 hard drive. And also, we are going to need uh, two files that uh, unfortunately we won't be able to provide the link for this because uh, these two files are copyrighted. But it is so much easy to find this on Google. So just uh, type in the uh, file name IOPRP252.IMG and the pops.elf and once you have uh, those files we are also going to need uh, our red host client this is uh, uh, this is going to be our ftp client for us to be able to transfer game uh, transfer files from our pc to ps2 by the way this video is also how we can uh, ftp between uh, our ps2 and pc by doing this you won't have uh, you don't need your usb going back and forth uh, just to having to transfer files for all these files to work we need the exact directory for me what i did was i have uh, prepared a usb and created a folder here ps2 hard drive uh, this will act as our ps2 hard drive and what we are going to do is we are going to create directories here and we are going to place uh, the uh, the files on the specific folder where we have uh, to place them in our internal hard drive so that we can make sure that we are placed so let us create here underscore underscore common so we are also going to create this uh, on the ps2 hard drive all right so uh so this is underscore underscore common and inside this folder we are going to create a folder pops and inside the folder pops we are going to place uh, these two files here the two copyrighted files the io uh, prp 252.img and the pops.elf and also after that we are going to create a uh, um last opl folder and here in this folder we are going to create another folder pops and we are going to place here the pop starter elf and also we are going to create underscore underscore dot pops here we are going to place all of our vcd files by the way uh for our ps2 to read our ps1 games it should be on the vcd format we have a separate video how we can uh, convert our iso files or our games to vcd format and after converting the game uh, to the vcd format we need uh, to uh, have uh, the right file name and the uh, format of the file name must be the game id separated by the dot the file name dot vcd by the way this uh, note here these are the, the the directories that we need on our ps2 so for example i have uh, placed here my uh, valkyrie profile game so first we are going to place uh, the game id or the game code dot the file name then that vcd i just created a uh, a note here so we can uh, easily track all of the files if they are in the correct directories okay so once everything has uh, been prepared it is now time for us to prepare our ftp and to do that we need our ps2 ip address to check our ps2 ip address let us launch our launcher on the configuration i have i have already prepared my u launcher but for the benefit of this video we are going to remove uh, these two applications here so let us remove this then we need the uh for uh, the hard disk loader or the hard disk manager we can found them in the miscellaneous here our hd manager then the ps2 net again on the miscellaneous now uh, going back on our PC let us run our client this one 
so here we are going to enter the ip address of the of our ps2 and to check our ip address we can check it here network ip address by the way on the gateway make sure that you have the right ip address of your modem and that the ip address of your ps2 must be available so once you are satisfied uh, with uh, the values so uh, click on save and we can now press on ok and run our ps2 net And here on our client, we can uh, place here the directories that can be accessed by our PS2. So uh, we placed here the folder that we created that will act as our PS2 internal hard drive. So it will be easier to recognize uh, the right directories. So you can just drag and drop the folder here. And we also place uh, the directory of our PS1 games. So also again, uh, to be able to access them directly on our PS, PS2. So just drag and, drop the, uh, drag and drop the directory on the client. And uh, you will see here the red sign because it is not yet uh, connected. Uh, if, it's not turning uh, if it is not turning green, you can uh, just play around with the file browser. Check in the host. And if it's still not turning green, you may uh, go ahead and uh, relaunch the uh, application. But now green so that means that we are now able to check the directory from our pc so let us check our host and here are the directories so from here we may now be able to uh, transfer our files uh, from pc to ps2 it's so much easier compared to just uh, using the usb but if you prefer using usb then you can just uh, uh, check on the file browser then plug in your usb and you may find the uh, the contents of your USB here on the mass and once everything has been uh, set let us go ahead and run our hard drive manager okay so I'm using a hard drive uh, with the size of 120 gig and you will see the details of your hard drive here so to be able to format our hard drive just press on R1 then create then format and wait for it to finish so I just formatted it but let us format it again and once the format has been completed, we may now be able to start or create a partition. We'll first create a partition that will be used for our PS1 games. And to create a partition, click on R1, then create. For the PS1 games, so we need a partition named underscore, underscore, dot, pops. So you may, uh, you can see that here on our node this is a directory of our ps1 games i'm sorry i forgot to place your uh, dot there you go i'm sorry if i wasn't able to uh, to notice that a while ago but this is the direct uh, the correct directory for our ps1 games underscore underscore then pops then enter and I mean okay and from here you may now be able to uh, allocate a partition for you for your ps1 but be careful because uh, the partition that you will create is only for the ps1 games and you cannot place any ps1 games outside of this partition so you have to make sure that you are going to uh, allocate a uh, desired partition for your for your ps1 only and uh, avoid having so uh, too much partition more than your need for your ps1 games but for me i will just uh, create here 20 gig because i don't i'm the type of person that don't that hate jumping from games one game to another but i have a lot of uh, favorite ps1 games but i want to play them uh once one at a time or two at a time or three at a time <laughs> but uh, i will choose here 23 gig and uh, now create a partition And we now have a partition for our PS1 games. We may place our PS1 games here for it to work. But for that to work, we still have to create a folder for our OPL. And for that, it will be so much easier for OPR to let OPL do the job. So let us first run our OPL. 
and on our OPL click on settings and make sure that this one hard drive uh, or HDD device start mode uh, is on auto and also PS1 games dis uh, display, uh, display mode is on auto then click on OK then click on save this will uh, create the folders that we need for our OPL and once, the, uh, once that has been done we may now go back to our U launcher All right, so um, once we have uh, relaunched uh, our U launcher, our RAD host client uh, will uh, stop working. So if we check our host here, we will no longer have an access to our host and uh, there. So we just have to relaunch our client. It will go back to RAD and just run our PS2 net and it will go back to green uh, we may now transfer our ps1 games to our ps2 by the way let's uh, let us first check the uh, folders that was created by our opl you can check that here on our hdd0 here this is uh, the folders for our ps1 so in case uh, you have uh, downloaded arts for your games you may download uh, or you may you may copy and paste those files here on the art folders in case you want to beautify uh, your game manager you may use uh, your opl manager for that and uh, we are going to create a separate video for our opl manager using our opl manager we can uh, rename our games uh, for them to be recognized by our opl and we may also download and uh, and customize our artwork for the games and for now we are going to place uh, the files that we need on the right folders so this is the reason why we have uh, created the folder ahead what we need uh, first are the two copyrighted files so let's go back to the host and on the ps2 hdd0 let's go back to common and just copy the pops folder and place it inside the common folder And if we check it here, here are the two files. Uh, then uh, we need the pop starter that elf. We uh, will uh, see that on our pops folder, the plus pops here. Copy the pops folder, the whole pops folder, and uh, paste it in the OPL folder. And we can see here the pops folder with the pop starter that elf. And lastly, we are now ready to transfer our PS1 games. So let's go back to the host. And this is uh, the uh, folder where I place my PS1 games. Let us just transfer the Legend of Ligaya first. Copy. Then let's go to the uh, let's go back to the right folder, the uh, the underscore underscore dot pops, and we are going to place it here. This may take uh, some time and if you are using a USB it will take a longer time so like we have mentioned earlier it is so much faster and easier using the FTP so uh, we'll, co uh, we'll come back after the transfer is finished all right so the transfer has uh, been completed and it is now time to check the games so you may add any games you want but uh, not all games are compatible with uh, pop starter so there is a list there is actually a list uh, of the compatible games but most of the time it will it will work at link uh, the compatibility uh, rate is around 90 uh, percent so uh, we have a good amount of games that are working on our internal hard drive so let us now check our game so let us run our opl and this is our game legend of legaya in case you have done all of the procedures but your game is not showing up here make sure that you have all the file names correctly make sure that you have uh, placed all of the files uh, on the right folders uh, in case the game is not showing here then uh, here is uh, our guide for the directories just follow all of these directories and uh, you can make sure that you will see your games here and let us first check the game
la gente obliga ya. Ay, so refreshing to hear this uh, sound. By the way, uh, on on our next video, we are going to show you how we can use uh, Dual Shock 3 and Dual Shock 4 controllers on your PS2. It will be just a short video because I don't have the Bluetooth dongle first, so I won't be able to use it uh, wirelessly. So we'll first need a um, a a cable for it to work, but if you have a cable then you will be able to use your ps3 controllers or your ps4 controllers on your ps2 so please uh, do wait for that video and here is our game and uh, this is the end of our video <laughs> so in case uh, we have missed a, an important uh, steps or in case you have some questions or suggestions please do let me know and i will definitely address them and again this is ali thank you so much and if you found this video helpful please do leave a thumbs up for me and please do subscribe and see you on the next video bye bye